We begin tonight with American democracy in peril as the country already looks ahead toward the 2024 race for the White House. Former President Trump working harder than ever to spread his big lie that the 2020 election that he lost was stolen. CNN's Brian Todd is joining us. He's got new details for us. Uh, Brian, Trump's big lie fueled that January 6th insurrection. And now the select committee in the House, their investigation is clearly intensified. That investigation is at a critical stage, Wolf. Trump's former aides and the former president himself seem ready to do battle with the committee as Trump continues to hold campaign-style rallies. I'm thrilled to be back. Tonight, new concerns that former President Trump, his allies and supporters continue to stoke the flames of the big lie that the last election was stolen and are setting the stage for a worrisome period leading to the 2024 vote. Trump and his allies are in a serious showdown with the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol, and the next few days will be critical. President Biden has waived executive privilege, allowing the National Archives to send Trump-era documents to the committee, documents which could shed light on whether anyone in Trump's White House inner circle might have been involved in the insurrection. Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff, a member of the committee, was asked by CBS when the committee will get those documents. We should, I think, get those documents soon because the sitting okay. president has the primary say on executive privilege. Uh, we also want to make sure that these witnesses come in and testify. But that may not happen. Of the four former Trump aides who have been subpoenaed for documents and testimony, two of them, former Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and former National Security aide Cash Patel, are said to be communicating with the committee. The third, former Deputy Chief of Staff Dan Scavino, was finally physically served with a subpoena after several days of committee staffers trying to find him. And the fourth, former Trump White House strategist Steve Bannon, has indicated through his lawyer he will not cooperate with the committee at all, prompting leaders of the committee to threaten to refer anyone who doesn't cooperate to the Justice Department for possible criminal contempt charges. This comes as more GOP leaders seem to be falling firmly in line with Trump. Congressman Steve Scalise, the number two Republican in the House, was pressed repeatedly on Fox News Sunday on whether he thought the 2020 election was stolen, and repeatedly he refused to answer. But last time, I promise, do you think the election was stolen or not? I understand you think there were irregularities and things that need to be fixed. Do you think the election was stolen? Yeah. And it's not just irregular, it's states that did not follow the laws set, which the Constitution says they're supposed to follow. And Republican Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa, who voted to certify the 2020 election results, and earlier this year slammed Trump for claiming the election had been stolen, stood with Trump at the former president's rally in Iowa this weekend, and heartily accepted Trump's endorsement for his re-election bid. So if I didn't accept the endorsement of a person that's got 91%, of the re Republican voters in Iowa, I wouldn't be too smart. I'm smart enough to accept that endorsement. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, Trump himself at that same Ohio rally continued to stoke the big lie. And actually, we won by a lot. They rigged the election, and now, based on the rigged election, they're destroying our country. On his HBO show Real Time, liberal comedian Bill Maher warned of what he called a slow-moving Trump coup. Trump will run in 2024. He will get the Republican nomination. And whatever happens on election night, the next day he will announce that he won. The former president is fanning the flames in other ways as well. Over the weekend, recording a video praising Capitol rioter Ashley Babbitt on the occasion of her birthday and demanding justice for Babbitt. Trump and his supporters have sought to make Ashley Babbitt a martyr. She was shot and killed on January 6th as she tried to break through a window to the Speaker's lobby. They're doing that even though investigators have concluded that she appeared to threaten lawmakers and the Capitol Police officer who shot her has not been disciplined or charged. Wolf. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Brian Todd reporting for us. Let's get some more on all of this. Uh, our chief political analyst, Gloria Borgia, is with us. CNN senior commentator, the former Ohio governor, John Kasich, is with us, and our chief Legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin is with us as well. He's the author, by the way, of the book, True Crimes and Misdemeanors, The Investigation of Donald Trump. Gloria, after the January 6th attack, Republicans, including Senator Chuck Grassley, called on former President Trump to take responsibility. Yeah. How is it possible that less than a year later, uh, Grassley would stand by Trump's side as he spouts new election conspiracy? Wolf, uh, Craven ambition, total hypocrisy. 
Uh, what Chuck Grassley said after January 6th was even worse th than what you just uh, quoted. He accused John Donald Trump of belittling and harassing elected officials across the country to get his way and accused the president of extreme, aggressive, and irresponsible behavior. And there he is accepting his endorsement because Donald Trump is popular in his state. At the age of 88, he has decided uh, to run for re-election. This is someone who was in the Capitol that day and had to hide from the insurrectionists. This is someone who should know better. Uh, this is someone who throughout his political career has been on the side of whistleblowers. And the other day he said that Donald Trump did absolutely nothing wrong in his office on January 3rd when he was trying to pressure the Department of Justice to fix the election. Something has happened with Chuck Grassley and he wants to get reelected and he knows Donald Trump can help him get there in Iowa. He's the ranking member of the Senate Judiciary yep. Committee. He's been in the Senate for so many That's years right. you would think. Uh, he would know better than this, uh, but uh, he does. clearly he's, he's got he political ambition, <laughs> even at this stage uh, in his career. You know, Jeffrey, uh, a Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney says, uh, and I'm quoting her now, uh, perpetuating the big lie is an attack on the core of our constitutional republic. Uh, this is an incredibly undemocratic m m a movement, uh, isn't it? Let me be very specific about one threat. And, and this came up in Steve Scalise's interview with, uh, with Fox yesterday. One of the things that Republicans are now talking about is using state legislatures to vote after the election to seat or not seat the top vote winner in that state. It could be fo the vote for president. It could be the vote for other statewide officials. But think about that. This is now becoming an official position of the Republican Party that Republican state legislatures in states like Pennsylvania, in Iowa, in Florida, can vote not to certify the actual results, but put their favored candidate in. This is something that um, several states are, are considering doing, and it is, it is shocking that uh, it, it hasn't gotten more attention for the anti-democratic act that it is, but this is where we are heading, and this is what I think Bill Maher, it, it, you know, who may be a comedian, but he sure knew what he was talking about last night. It's not funny. Yeah, it, it, it was very, very powerful indeed. You know, Governor Kasich, do you fear Trump will be successful in purging any members of the GOP who would stand up to him if, if he attempts another coup down the road? Well, look, I mean, first of all, I like Bill Maher. He's been on all sides. I mean, he's been criticizing the left as much as the right. He's it's really been remarkable in what he's been doing. I think there's one important thing to remember here, and that is these legislators didn't do that. Uh, and I understand the push is to get them to do it. And I, I'm concerned about it. This is one of the reasons why I was probably the most rep prominent Republican to be against Donald Trump, to fight against Donald Trump and what he stood for. But I, I think to some degree, Mars, uh, his, the things that he had to say, he was connecting a lot of dots. And I understand what Jeff Tubin said, but I have to also say, I still believe at the end of the day, there has to be such a vast conspiracy to overturn this. You gotta have the courts involved. You gotta have local election officials involved. You gotta have secretaries of state involved. I think it's, it's a bridge too far. But look, uh, that's why I've never been for Trump, and I don't intend to be for Trump, and shame on somebody like Grassley. I think Grassley's probably got terrible advisors who are close to Trump, who talked this, this guy into this, and it's uh, glorious right about, about him. He's never been this way, and you know, he's 88, he's searching for re-election, and you know, it's, it's, it's pretty sad. Yeah, you know, and Gloria, you and I have covered Grassley over these many years, and it is pretty sad to see how he's flipped uh, just in recent weeks. Yeah, I, I, it is, and uh, you have to say it's about his, it's about his uh, re-election, but you know, what this, if you take a step back, Wolf, what this is is about co-opting the Republican establishment. That picture of Chuck Grassley smiling next to Donald Trump saying, of course it would be so smart, I'm so smart to accept this, uh, you know, endorsement. Um, is, is, is Trump co-opting people? And with Grassley standing there, you can look at that and say, oh, Oh, look, he's got the support of uh, one of the key people in the United States Senate 
wait a minute, that's, you know, that's okay. And then what do other senators do? Do they fall in line behind Donald Trump because they're worried? I mean, what happens next is that Donald Trump's agenda could become their agenda. And a lot of them don't want it because his agenda is one thing, relitigating 2020. Their agenda is running against Joe Biden on immigration, on spending, you name it. But now, with this, it's becoming the Trump agenda, and that could motivate Democrats, actually, to get out and vote.